Welcome to the Daily Word for the Lent. Today's reading is from the Book of Deuteronomy, chapter four, verse one, and verses five to nine. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live. To enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. See, just as the Lord my God has charged me, I now teach you statutes and ordinances for you to observe in the land that you are about to enter and occupy. You must observe them diligently. For this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, "Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people." For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to Him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I'm setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children, and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Obedience to God's law bring forth joy and blessings. Deuteronomy is the final book in the Pentateuch. In this book, Moses depicts that. After forty years of wilderness wandering, and having delivered God's statutes and ordinances, he was instructed by God to climb up the mount and gaze at the land of milk and honey that God promised to Israel. Yet he himself never entered this land. Today's reading took place in the valley opposite the Beit Peor. Looking afar to the promised land, Moses exhorted Israel to obey God's statutes and ordinances. Statutes are the moral, ritual, and civil law detailing what God requires of Israel, and ordinances are the legal obligations, privileges, and rights stems from the enactment of God's law. In order to occupy the land promised to them. The Israelites must first obey these laws, and they might receive God's protection and leave. To Moses' understanding, after decades of contact and conflict with Israel, the laboring Palestinian nations definitely knew that Israel worships only one God. Based on the standpoint of these nations. About the laws observed by Israel, Moses let the Israelites learn that it was out of God's mercy and righteousness this law were given, and also out of wisdom and discernment they chose God. Moses urged Israel to recognize that the God reflected in this law is a God who draws near to His people. A God who is always ready to hear their prayers. This God is different from the unapproachable deity worshipped by other nations. Moses also asserts that God's law was just and righteous, surpassing those of all other nations. Throughout the passage, Moses tells us about God's nearness to His people. And giving his law, he shows his righteousness. During the Israelites' wilderness wandering, God guided them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. His presence on the Ark of Covenant had accompanied them throughout the journey. 
His God was righteous towards all those who obey Him. Thus, He was also merciful to other nations without partiality for Israel, as He was forbidding Israel to attack the land of Ammonites. Moses repeatedly admonished Israel to be sober in remembering experience of God's presence. In a way that their personal experience of God's grace and protection would enable them to and commit without any reservation in observing His law throughout their life, He even encouraged them to share the trust in God's love, righteousness, and mercy with their next generations, so that they could live a life of praise and thanksgiving. From Moses' perpetual teaching, it revealed a God who led him to obedience. This God had called Moses to the very great task of leading the whole nation to follow God, so that they may enter the Promised Land and prosper into a great nation. Moses, however, bore the consequence of the people's disobedience to God, and was unable to enter the land. Although Moses pleaded with God to cross over the Jordan River to the land of meal and honey, on the other side, God did not permit it, and Moses finally accepted this was God's will. After God had shown him the land which Israel will inherit from the top of Mount Nebo, Moses died peacefully. Moses set an example of faithful obedience to God, not asking his petition to be responded as he wishes, but to accept God's will wholeheartedly. Then let us come to know this God more deeply, follow and serve Him in our life without expecting reward, but complete the task. He entrusted to us with joy and blessings. Let us have a moment of reflection. Have you ever felt bewildered about the future, unable to find a way forward, and troubled by disillusions? How did you overcome these challenges? Did you experience God's guidance? What law do God want you to uphold in your daily life? Are you willing to obey them as a witness of your faith in God? Now let us pray. O Lord, show us the things you wish us to do, and grant us strength to fulfill our duties. Guide us, and grant us the faith to face tomorrow's uncertainty, and accept whatever will happen to us, trusting you are the Lord of everything. We ask you to walk with us, so that we would have joy and peace in our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.